What's up, Wikimaniacs? Welcome to another Monday Reddit reading episode. It's your boy, Sean. And this week, we have a father who's just tired of being disrespected. A boyfriend who successfully creeps out an entire family. A husband who takes way too long on the toilet. Uh Uh-oh, I did not f***ing title this one. Uh... (laughs) A Wikimaniac submitted story about wearing white to a wedding. Also, it wouldn't be a Monday Reddit reading episode without a segment by the amazing Underbaki. But if you're a patron or YouTube member, you get a story shared by the goat. And it's a dying friend with one last request. That sounds interesting. Links are in the show notes. If not... You uh, read it on Wiki starts now. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Apologies. I forgot for a decorum, split second. Sean. Decorum. Decorum. <laughs> decorum. In the court. Absolutely decorum. <laughs> My apologies. It's your boy Sean with me today. J and J, say hello. Hello. Bang bang. Oh, yeah. Uh, Anything to go over? Well, one big announcement, you know, we're going to go into details as we usually do with the Venmos and the, you know, our Operation Olive Branch. uh, What do you call it? Our GoFundMe, the family we're helping. But we just crossed a huge line. So we'll do the headline now, the details later on in the episode. But you guys have helped Nora cross $10,000. Holy that's moly. Awesome. I'm not, that is you know, great. that's, you know, I'm sure other people that aren't Wikimaniacs are also donating, but we helped yeah. get there. In fact, this week alone, you guys have donated $2,030 essentially. Crazy. So, and, I mean, the last week and a half, because we didn't do it last week, but right. regardless, you guys, $2,030. And Crazy. I mean, we're, you guys are helping out in a huge way and we can't, we couldn't be more appreciative of you guys. Thank you guys so much. A hundred percent. Now, anything else before we hop into the story, boys? Let's hop in. I hope everyone enjoyed last Friday's episode. <laughs> as much as we did. As we're recording, no one has heard it yet except for us. <laughs> and John and I Let have me both- just say, going through, going through <laughs> that thing again, I was ugly crying from laughter so was i it was it was good uh editing it was a challenge for sure apologies um let me know because i i left a lot like i felt uh, leaving it as more authentic as i could i didn't take out a lot of the silences because i felt like it added to the the bit oh it definitely did (laughs) the comedic effect of not knowing what the fuck to say (laughs) So Sean's what, face the whole time yeah. during that last 20 minutes of those, <laughs> that episode was comedic gold. Stress. People. <laughs> I was getting fucked. <laughs> right over the coals. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me know how you like that editing style. Cause if we do that again, I'll, I'll try and leave it. If not, I'll cut out the silences, but uh, yeah, that's something we need to do again. Uh, it's not something we can do every week. Just, I think the stress no. alone would kill Sean. The stress <laughs> is a lot. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, our monthly, whenever John and I host, it'll be a asshole. Something court. chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that would be cool. Yeah. I like that. <sighs> okay. Are you guys ready to hop into the first one? Let's do it. Let's do it. We might go insane listening to this. <laughs> we might have uh, a new goat because this is the first of two stories from this person. First time I've well, heard of it. But uh, this is coming from r slash regretful parents cross posted by. Ground score strawberry bunny. Okay. Have, have I have we used heard them before? before. Okay. I think so. We have. Okay. Yes. Well, my apologies. My y'all know my <laughs> memory is not good. We'll we'll go with them after the second story they they submitted. Hell yeah. All right. So it's uh we're going on an uphill. We're gonna start low and then go kinda high. Gotcha. Honestly, not it's not very high, but you know, we're starting a little low. All right, here we go. We start, we start below the bar and then we, we just, get to close neutral. to the bar. Yeah. We, get so we start from the bottom and we're still going to be there later on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like Drake. Yeah. Just like Drake. Guys. That's how many weeks in a row, baby? We're the missing the card. We're missing the Kendrick L- Lamar live concert on Amazon tonight. Wow. I, I hope guess. it's available for replay. 
But uh, yes, let's get into it. This is titled, The Kid Had a Meltdown This Weekend and I'm Done. I'm not going to be disrespected any longer. Was that just the title? That's just the title. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, not great. <laughs> yeah. Also, never heard of this subreddit. This is new to me. R slash regretful parents. Yeah, sounds, I haven't either. It sounds very sad. It does. Give me Cartman vibes. You will respect my authority. <laughs> respect my authority. <laughs> I, I just had that clip uh, pop up on my TikTok algorithm where he was like, so do girls have bows? <laughs> so, so girls go to scratch their bows. What's there? <laughs> That's a pretty good Cartman impression. <laughs> and the girl's I like, my papa. <laughs> the girl's just like, do you want to see? And he was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that show's so stupid all right my 12 year old daughter had a meltdown this weekend over an iphone my ex-wife and i agreed that we would get her a gab phone it's a phone for kids and teens it has no internet and no social media on it this summer provided she did well in school and showed that she was responsible enough we would get her the gab phone I went to pick her up this past Friday, and when I got there, I saw that my ex-in-laws had bought her an iPhone. My ex goes, my mom and dad wanted to surprise her since she did so well. Now, my ex-in-laws have always tried to undermine our parenting, especially my ex-mother-in-law. My ex-wife always tried to downplay it, and it was one of the reasons that we got divorced six years ago. Mm. I say. She's going to be giving this back because you and I agreed that it would be a gab cell phone when she got her first cell phone. I look at my ex-mother-in-law and tell her, the phone is going back. And before you say anything, it's not about the money. Her mother and I had already planned what type of phone she could have. You're going to take this phone back because you had no business buying it for her anyways. She goes over to her and says, sorry, honey, but your dad said you can't have it. The tears start first. And then the meltdown. And no, she's not on the spectrum. She yells at me, saying, I hate you. You ruin everything. I hate going over to your house. I hate you. I wish Tom, who is her stepdad since she's been six, was my real dad. I hate you, and I wish you would disappear. Something just broke inside of me. I thought about all the money I'd spent in this custody battle, all the time I spent going to recitals, going to parent-teacher meetings, because she was being a mean girl. All the crap I had to put up with from my ex-in-laws, always trying to undermine me, my ex-wife agreeing to something with me and then caving to to her or to her folks, making me look like the bad guy. Just all the downright disrespect and being made to feel terrible just because I try to set some rules and boundaries. The feeling of always drowning and being overwhelmed by parenting, I was just so sick of parenting this mean little girl. Her grandma comforts her and her mom tells her, go apologize to your dad. I tell her, no, don't make her apologize because I want to know if she truly feels that way. I look her in the eyes and I ask her, do you really feel that way? Just tell me the truth. She looks at me in the eyes and says, yes, I hate you. And yes, I wish Tom was my dad. And she meant it. I tell them, fine. She can keep the phone because I'm done. She doesn't want to come over anymore? Fine. If she wants Tom to adopt her, tell him to draw up the papers because I'll sign them. You're going to get your wish, kiddo. I will disappear. I'll pack up your room and your things at my place, and I'll drop everything off this weekend. And I did just that. When I got home, I packed up all of her stuff, dropped it off at her mom's front early Saturday afternoon. I got dozens of texts and calls from my ex wanting to talk about about the last few days, but I did not respond. I was offered an assistant director job with the international division of my company a few weeks ago. Even though it is a huge promotion and a huge pay increase, I turned it down because of the extensive travel requirements and a possible relocation overseas. First thing this morning, I went to my boss and told him if the position was still open, I wanted it. By lunch, I was in a Zoom meeting with the VP of International and the department head of International. And before I left this evening, I was in HR filling out the paperwork. 
I officially start the new job in three weeks. He works fast. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. I know I'm going to have to eventually talk to my ex and my kid, but I meant what I said. I'm done. If her stepdad wants to adopt her, he can. If not, that's fine as well. I'll simply just be a monthly check. I may update this, but I'm just done being disrespected. Man. Ooh. I have uh, when one. we started that with the title, I was like, oh, he's going to be an asshole, but. But I'm, not. I, I mean, I think he's impulsive. I think uh, he's impulsive. I, yeah. But I, I wouldn't call him impulsive if he's been being undermined for the past how many years? Plus, that was a huge reason why the divorce happened. Yeah, but even you said he was moving fast or like. Uh, true. Like with all that stuff, which is, I mean, I, like I, I understand what he's doing. Like, because, yeah, that's got to suck to have the mother-in-law and father-in-law just undermine you like that and make you the yeah. bad guy all the time. Yeah, that's tough. It's just shitty. Uh, and yeah, you guys agreed to a phone. That's what you guys should have stuck to. How old is she again? Sorry. 12. 12? 12. 12. Okay. So yeah, old enough to, you know, mean what she's saying when she says that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's, you know, in, in anger at you, uh, she had a chance to take it back and, and, you know, she stood on business. She said, <laughs> Clarify I hate it. She, yes, yeah, kept kept going. So, I don't know. I, yeah, it's a shitty situation for him to be in. I don't know if I would fully encourage him cutting off all communication with his daughter, but I understand where he's coming from in this frustration. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of on the same boat of like not completely cutting off daughter's life because I feel like a lot of it is influenced by the the ex as well as and being encouraged by that behavior with that family. So I would just have a really hard conversation with the, with the ex, is it ex-wife or ex-husband? Ex-wife, right? Ex-wife. Yeah. Yeah. I would just have a long, hard conversation with the ex-wife and say like, Hey, if this is how it's going to go down, I'm going to pack my bags and, you know, take an opportunity of a lifetime type of situation. It sounds like he's not opposed to, you know, providing for a kid granted that's going to be a lot based on the promotion that he's he's going to get or the op is going to get but this is hard because it, it does suck being undermined every single step and and it kind of brings back like foul memories of what caused that divorce in the first place so and for the kid to say that that's got to be hurtful for a parent i'm we're not a parent we're not parents but yeah. like if we probably heard that that shit would probably sting a lot so yeah i don't blame the guy i mean i would try to repair my relationship with the daughter. Mm-hmm. Not so much with the ex, but I, I can understand why he's hurt and doing what he's doing. Yeah. I think you almost have to still have a relationship with the ex. If you want to still be a parent to the child, just even to lay out ground rules with them to be like, they ain't gonna follow it. They're no, gonna undermine I, mean, it. I know. I know. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah. It's a really tricky situation. To be it honest. is. Cause yeah. it is, it is your kids still, and you still have responsibility yeah. over them. It's one thing if it's like, this is your stepkid telling you this shit. Uh, like, that's one thing to, to cut communication and, and cut everything off. But you're like the parent. So I don't know. But with the whole like, question, this is not, I'm, no, I'm ignorant in this, in, in this matter. If she gets, if the daughter gets legally adopted by the stepfather, that means he has no more responsibilities, right? OP? I don't know. Is that what I'm getting at? I have no idea. You're asking the wrong two guys, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Because would he have to pay child support if he gets legally adopted by somebody, someone else? Rebecca? (laughs) (laughs) Please let us. I'm like legit curious. Like, how does that work? Yeah. It probably also depends on, you know, district or where they are, you know, like state or country or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. No idea. I'm sure comments will let us know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. So the over an iPhone, bro. Like, damn, that's <laughs> tough. that's crazy. I did look up the Gab phone. It looks like shit. <laughs> I would at but least I get, this, get a I get cool the safety phone, features, like a like a razor, like an yeah. old razor, some vintage looking cool. Hey, thing. man, those phones were tight, bro. My first phone was black and white. They didn't even have proper ringtones, so <laughs> I get it. <laughs> what do you call it? So the first comment on or the top comment on r slash uh, regretful parents uh, says. Your ex-wife and her parents are actually committing something called parental alienation. Against you and your child's co-parents' wishes, your ex-in-laws gave your child something that she wasn't supposed to have. Your co-parent then informed your child 
and then said, you said she couldn't have it. That's yeah. wrong mm. because you guys both agreed that she couldn't have the iPhone. Your ex-in-laws are purposefully undermining you and are now starting in on the parental alienation acts. Give a call to your lawyer and ask them if there's anything that could be done about these interactions. That's good advice. Yeah. That is good advice. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, because it is, it is bullshit that she was like, oh, yeah, your dad said no. It's like, no, we agreed. We both yeah, said no. You were part fucking, of this fucking conversation. Snake. You made that. Yeah. yeah. That's the only game that they're going to have in that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That might be too old of a game to, for hey, the reference. Hey, <laughs> so Stop aging me, my guy. <laughs> the only thing is like, I get where he's coming from, but also abandoning your abandoning your kid feels like a step gone too far. Yeah, uh, but he is for you know the kid is twelve, so you can imagine you know at least twelve years. Who knows if they were undermining him before uh, mm -hmm. before they even had the daughter? You know, so it is a decade plus of just being always told you're wrong and gaslit. So yeah, yeah. I get that it's rough, but. It is the, the last action of being like, oh, fuck it. I'll just move out of the country. That seems like, <laughs> all right, well, maybe slow it down. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I agree with everything you guys said. It's, it's a tough spot. Yeah, it's, it's one kids. thing if she's like in her 20s and telling you this shit. And then it's like, okay, well, fuck you. Yeah. Then. Like, you're an adult. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if a 12-year-old who's in the middle of a temper tantrum is like, has the wherewithal to say what they really mean again not a not a parent don't have yeah. a kid but i just imagine a 12 year old emotions on a high adrenaline pumping they're not thinking the most clear-headed they could be you know what i mean that's true I'll so it's, it seems weird to abandon your child off of like you know like i don't know if she meant she could have she could have but i'm just yeah. saying maybe wait a couple days and be like did you mean what you said and then if she's still like tripling down that you can be like well i'm gonna keep trying maybe but just not as hard i'll let you have your i don't know i would not move out of the country that'd be rough yeah i mean yeah that's it is it is just a funny or not funny it's a funny concept to be like did you mean that and she's just like yeah i fucking meant it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like did Jesus. i stutter <laughs> i said it twice that day i'll say it twice today oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah uh but yeah you're right it is impulsive and that's that's yeah all right tricky are we ready to get into this next one, boys? Let's do it. This is a boyfriend successfully creeps out an entire family. Ooh, God damn. Achievement. Okay. <laughs> Achievement. <laughs> <A> trophy unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from r slash relationship ground score advice. Coming from, yet again, ground score strawberry bunny. Hit that oh. button, Josh. Ah. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. wondering, like... Did he hit on the grandma or something? Like, like, what did he do? Yeah, I want you guys to give your thoughts first on the title, and then uh, you know I'll say something. I gotta go with Josh. He probably rizzed up Mima over here. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I gonna say for my serious answer, I gotta say maybe an inappropriate joke. Okay, okay. Uh, my guess is they saw a family picture of like the grandma back in the day. And they were like, damn, I'd hit that <laughs> smash. That's Would. a crazy, that's Would. a crazy <laughs> thing to say <laughs> to a picture in your girlfriend's family's house. <laughs> you know how they have those picture frames of like slideshows, old ass picture of grandma comes up <laughs> Would smash, <laughs> smash, insta smash. <laughs> you gotta go brother. <laughs> All right. So, trigger warnings. Oh, <laughs> Immediately <no. laughs> stop the funny. <laughs> Damn it. Trigger warning for, I think, stalking. I think. Uh, okay. Here we go. Also, trigger warning for potentially manipulation or abusive relationship. I love how your trigger warnings are also like, Question it marks? might be this. <laughs> <laughs> if, Let us know what it is. <laughs> if that sounds like a bad time. You can skip this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is my girlfriend, 28 year old female, and her family is upset because I, 29 male, showed up to their holiday destination without their agreement. What Ooh. do I do? Go home. Yeah, go home. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I've been with my girlfriend for around two years. 
A few weeks ago, my girlfriend Anna planned a three-week holiday with her family, their longest holiday in a while. I asked to join because I felt uncomfortable with her going away for so long. Why? Yeah. She's with family, family. you dumb bitch. <laughs> she also has cousins who are there who I am worried could be a bad influence. She told me I couldn't come, though. Bro, she a grown ass woman. She yeah. is twenty eight like, years old. Look at the bad influences. Years old. Are you worried about? <laughs> Crazy. I didn't think it was a good idea for her to go without me. So, I found the Airbnb location on her computer, took note of it, and flew over there myself while they were on holiday, just oh. to make sure everything was going all right. I thought it would be a sweet gesture, and they would be happy to see me, but. Once I arrived and rang the doorbell, her dad opened the door, asked me what I was doing, and then told me to leave after I explained. I called Anna because it would be easier to resolve it with her there, but she was out, so I waited outside for her to come back. Bro. Just every wild. wrong decision. Dude. Dude, the dad already asked you to leave. Why can't you respect the family's wishes? Yeah. I'm now wondering like your relationship with her because if it exists. Well, yeah, because for the dad just to be like, leave is a red flag to me to be like, oh, he's not even like entertaining the idea that you're here. Mm -hmm. You know, like most people would be like, oh my gosh, what a surprise. But straight yeah. up, leave. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Her dad came out again and started to threaten to get physical if I didn't leave. I then apologized quickly and left. When she heard about it, though, she texted me saying she was upset because this was her family holiday and I'm not respecting her privacy. She also told me her parents hate me. I had to fly back home because I could not afford to stay there. I'm really worried about what's going to happen to her without me on her long holiday. How do I deal with her cousins? How do I make sure she's all right? And how do I repair my relationship with Anna and her parents without me even being there? How do I control every move that she makes? Exactly fucking <laughs> yeah, you, right. Holy fuck. You're going to get a breakup and a restraining order at this point, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, as someone who's been through something very similar, uh, you are becoming a danger to this family. I'm shocked Anna has a relationship with you by the sounds of it because I wouldn't put up with this shit. This is like manipulation and control and like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two weeks away from you sounds like a good thing for her. She might uh, come so, come to some clarity uh, while she's away. She probably don't, the cousins probably, you probably don't like the, or OP probably doesn't like the cousins because they're probably telling your girl that like, hey, your boy ain't it. <laughs> That's probably mm. why they're a bad influence. Same with their parents. Yeah. That's yeah. why you're scared. Because you're breaking away the whole fucking uh, separating them from their pack. Yeah. Because you want to be able to control her. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Dude, there's like so much things you can do if someone like, like your partner is on vacation. Juliet's going to leave me for like two and a half weeks to go on vacation. Steam with dick. <laughs> shit you know what i'm saying i'm gonna be playing that all day he's Take gonna be working actually sean full time oh yeah <laughs> oh well i'm gonna be hr i have unlimited pto motherfucker <laughs> true <laughs> but yeah man like there's so much things you can do like hey if personally when i go on vacation and julia's not involved and vice versa all i say is like hey have fun with your family have fun with your friends if you want share your location with me when you go so that way like i can at least you know keep tabs if you if you want um, but that's never like enforced, you know, it's an option. Yeah. And likewise, when she, we do, we do the same thing. Like, Hey, just text me when you get to where you want, uh, where you're supposed to be. If you feel uncomfortable, call me. So that way I can at least be on the phone with you. But other than that, I'm gonna leave you to hell alone. Have fun. I'm going to be playing video games. <laughs> do what you need to do. Have fun. So yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand couples like that, where there's like, they need to know what you're doing every minute of the day. It's it's like possessive to me. Well, that's exactly what it is. It sounds like yeah. a very one-sided relationship where he's just like, yeah. how can I control everything she's doing? Uh, and I worry her parents are going to, or her family is going to try and, you know, keep her away from me, which is, sounds like a good thing. Sounds like it has to happen. <laughs> yeah. Bro, the dad wants to square up. That says a lot about <laughs> you. OP. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he could be crazy too. I don't know, but it sounds more like it's a you thing than a, yeah. uh, the parents thing. 
She said no. So I snuck on her computer, found yeah. the Airbnb, Wild. bought a Blew plane down. ticket, flew. And yeah. try, you're trying to get sympathy points. Well, I got to go back because I can't afford to stay here. Who the fuck told you to go there, idiot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you can't afford it. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't you have gone. It's just on you. <laughs> All right, there are some comments in here. Somebody's asked, so you asked if you could come on a trip. She said no, and then you expected her to be happy to see you on the trip? OP replied, I bet she would have been happy if she was the one that actually opened the door, but her parents just convinced her that I was in the wrong. I don't think no. so. Yeah. Not She's, a lot of convincing is needed. <laughs> also, she was the one that said, we're going, no. like, I'm going with my parents and family, yeah. so... Yeah, I don't think she'd be as happy. Somebody else said, you thought she would cheat. Just be honest. If you wanted to check if she's all right, you could have been perfectly fine with daily updates via phone call or text. And in regards to her parents hating you, what did you expect to happen? You're clearly a walking red flag. Hopefully your girlfriend comes to her senses, breaks up with you via text, and gets a restraining order if necessary. You to which right. OP yep. replies... Cut that restraining order crap out. I'm not a criminal. Controlling? I'm not controlling her. I'm just being a good boyfriend by looking out for her. Oh, no. the, the, the good boyfriend is someone who supports their partner uh, if they go on a family trip and is just like, all right, have fun. Like exactly what John explained. Yeah, exactly what John it, explained. Yeah. She's in the safety of her own family. <laughs> yeah, what are you expecting to happen? Oh my God. And if, she has a family that is like, hell yeah, cheat. You know what I mean? Like if, if that's her type of family, then, you know, that's a good thing that you're getting out of that relationship. It sounds like so yeah. uh, that's not the kind of girlfriend you want to be with or family you want in your life. So either way, it's a breakup. Yeah. yeah it, even if it's in this light you're painting. So yeah, you're it, whatever you're saying, OP, it's not helping your case. No. You are going to get a restraining order at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Last comment. At least a breakup. Somebody says, why are you concerned about the cousins? You didn't provide any explanation as to why you believe they could be a bad influence. You said this was the reason why you crashed your family vacation. OP replies, well, it's not the only reason, but her cousins like going out to parties a lot and stuff. <laughs> that I mean, means cheating. <laughs> yeah. If you're on vacation, oh. partying is probably just one of the things you can do. Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> it's yeah. drinking sunbathing or partying this is like the few things <laughs> yes snorkeling maybe throw that in there oh my god i snorkeled for the first time i almost died bro i cannot <laughs> snorkel well i will never do that again and i was out there for 30 minutes borderline drowning for 30 <laughs> minutes it was insane <laughs> i can't breathe out of my mouth guys i can't be a mouth breather <laughs> we should all scuba scuba dive it's fun oh. I bet Ryan loves that shit. He's a big scuba diver. Oh, it's so fun. I scuba dove with sharks before. I loved it. Yeah, my buddy does like uh, like actual diving. Um, I'm not that extreme. Like an instructor. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll stay on the boat, but I'll be there to eat after. Nice. All right. Next story. This one is coming from r slash petty revenge. And this is... Uh, oh, yes. This is uh, one of those ones that, uh, you know, sometimes I have extra stories if needed. Uh, lately, we have not needed that. We've been going way over. But uh, I wonder uh, why. this is one that I found. Yeah, probably my dumb ass talking about drowning. So, uh, someone, yeah, someone in the comments, because we, we asked that on one of your last episodes or whatever. And then uh, they were like, why? Why is it? Why do the episodes go so long? Quoting you and then proceeds to talk about shit for half an hour. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, one thing's for certain. Whatever stories we have, we're never going to skimp out on the stories in favor of, you know, talking shit. So we may That's talk true. our shit, but you will get the full amount of stories. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right. This one is titled, Wife thinks I'm taking longer than I need in the bathroom. So I now make sure she knows it's legit. Speaking of shit. Yeah. I was like, we're going to talk about shit now. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> get right into it. My wife and I bought our first house shortly after our wedding. Everything went smoothly and we enjoyed our time as newlyweds. Of course, as the honeymoon phase began to fade, some minor issues started to emerge. For her, the first one was the typical guy on the toilet problem. So 
Sometimes I spend quite a bit of time on the toilet. It's all legit though. I'm not just scrolling on my phone. I mean, I also do that, but I'm also <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to be doing in there as well. <laughs> I don't do that. Well, okay, I, mean, I, I do that. Little, yeah. A little bit I do <laughs> Just that. be honest. <laughs> a little bit. Anyways, my wife started to pick up on how long I was spending in the bathroom and she began to comment on it. This was exacerbated with some unlucky incidences for asking when I was coming out just as I was standing up and about to flush the toilet, making it seem like I was just standing there until she said something and flushed to fake like I had finished. Mm hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> for context, I eat a lot. I'm talking, I usually eat about 3,000 calories a day, give or take a few hundred. And I'm a thin framed guy, you bastard. Uh, <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah. 160 pounds, give or take, and I'm about six foot five. You bitch. You bastard. Wow. You fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> my knees ate me because of this. Oh my God. I'm so much shorter and so much heavier. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who you tell it? <laughs> uh, back then, I was still getting used to the bowel movements associated with eating that much, and they tended to come at random times in varying amounts. My wife, though, did not believe me. Her diet was much less structured than mine, and she had no notion of what was going on in that room while I was in there for so long. This culminated into a few arguments with her accusing me of wasting time in the bathroom on my phone and myself insisting that I was indeed pooping. They were mostly joke arguments, but I really wasn't wasting time and was actually a little offended that she wouldn't believe me. Yeah, it's wasting time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> nah. Wow. So I decided I would give a little revenge and clear my name in the process. So the next time I was in the bathroom and my wife was in earshot, I began loudly announcing the following at the appropriate intervals. Poop is currently exiting my butthole. Shortly followed by, <laughs> poop has finished exiting my butthole. I would do this two to three times for however long I was in the bathroom, during which I would be met with laughter and or groaning from the other room, depending on how many times I had made my announcement during that session. After a few days of this, she would get grossed out and say, all right, all right, I get it. And I would stop. Since then, I have developed a much more predictable poop schedule but I am no longer questioned as to my goings on in the bathroom behind closed doors. That sounds like you fixed the issue then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. <laughs> he's like, yeah, she no longer does it because of my revenge, but it's like, then he's like, oh, but I also have a more predictable schedule. It's like, well, that sounds like more of the solution. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. That's the real cause of the, yeah. uh, you know, the stopping of the arguments. I don't play on my phone, except when I do. And <laughs> I mean, I do that too. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? I want to hear her POV where it's like, yeah, so I kept confronting my husband about his, uh, his long poops and uh, he started announcing them out loud. They're 15 minutes shorter now. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been the perfect time for Tushy. Yeah. We are sponsors, damn it. What the hell? What is going on? Hurry up, Tushy. Get, everyone get at them. Us. Oh, yeah. Everyone at Tushy. Harass them until they <laughs> Please. become sponsors. Please. Hey, yo, not, don't, don't harass them. No, oh, no, no. Harass them. <laughs> <laughs> don't harass them. I can't wink. Same. I'm not good at winking. Uh, I, I will say, what do you call it? I feel like this guy's uh, poop is currently exiting butthole. Poop has finished exiting butthole. Could also, you know... It is, he is being truthful, but also what would stop his wife from being like, also a lie. You could just yeah. say that. <laughs> you think I believe you now? I That's think true. it's a, uh, it's not an incredibly smart plan. I think. No. In the grand, sc in the grand scheme of things, this is like a pretty minor thing. Oh but. yeah. Here's my suggestion. Okay. Connect some sort of a mic in your bathroom, like mm. a little bit close to the toilet. Bowl. Live stream it. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's yeah, just face speaker time. connect. Yeah, connecting to the, uh, connecting to the living room wherever your spouse is sitting. Once you l uh, rip out a loud one, instead of announcing it, they'll hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually screenplay. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. Uh, your FaceTime, uh, or just go. take a video of yourself and then airplay it. And uh, it doesn't even have to be your face. You could go straight hole so she knows what's up. 
<laughs> no, I'm thinking like live stream like a platform. Like go to what's the one that lets you do anything? Kick? Is that it? Rumble? There's one that Rumble. lets you do anything? That sounds one dangerous. Of those fucking wild ones. Yeah. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> Get a big deal with them and then you can just live stream that. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, catch our next live stream on kick, I think. <laughs> Sean shows his oh, I can't do it because then y'all be butt ass naked. We'll get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're gonna show how John actually poops. Yeah, we're done with the talk. <laughs> we're, time, we're ready to. It's a time for action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this last one is coming from r slash Reddit on Wiki. Whoa. A personal story coming from Nikki's first throwaway. <gasps> Ooh, I saw this one. It was a top one. It was a top one. It's titled, I wore white to my best friend's wedding. Gas. Asshole. Yeah. All right, how are y'all going, guys? <laughs> there's the title. <laughs> and then the first? There's the stats. <laughs> oh, is your best friend your husband? Whoa. Is Ooh. this like oh. the wife or the, the, Ooh. the mother was the doctor type riddle? Yeah, yeah the <laughs> riddle. <laughs> I can't operate on this person. It's my son. <laughs> what? How's that possible? I saw somebody make a joke about that riddle. and They said like 50 years ago, that, that riddle would have been impossible to solve. No, no <laughs> wives could be doctors. And you can't even so say sad. like gay dad because yeah, there weren't legal. Yeah, legally there were no gay dads, I guess. I don't know. So they're just like, Jesus. wow, 50 years ago, that riddle really would have stumped some people. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. It's either a gay dad or the mother. It's such yeah. an easy riddle. Super easy. <laughs> Unless you're, I guess, a, a bigot. Well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get into it. I keep listening to all of these episodes talking about people who wear white to other people's weddings. So I felt like I should, sh I should share my story. Mm. A few years ago, my amazing best friend, Kay, got married to her lovely husband, P, and I was the maid of honor. Prior to the wedding, K and P discussed dress colors and decided that they did not want white. While shopping, K fell in love with a gorgeous dark green dress, which made her look like a princess. She bought it and was happy. But when K told her, and especially P's family, about the dress, they got Really angry. <laughs> they were peed off. Why? <laughs> P is very low contact with his family since most of them are just horrible people who don't care about each other anyways. However, why the fuck are they bitching about yeah, it? Why the fuck do they even <laughs> like, care? Because it's care? tradition. Yeah. <laughs> just take the free meal and dance and then leave. Yeah. Seriously. However, what they did care about a great deal was. K's dress color. Initially, K and P didn't want to invite them and wanted to be done with it, but P's dying grandmother would be very sad if their family wasn't invited. So all of the weird aunts, the weird uncles, weird cousins, and whatever had to be there were invited. His grandma was the only one in the family that P was close to, so he didn't want to deny her that wish. P.S. Grandma ended up passing a few days before the wedding, but Ooh. uninviting everyone at that point would have been very rude. She. She. <laughs> the dress fight continued and ended up with P's most unhinged uncle yelling at Kay, saying, it's not a wedding if nobody is wearing white. And alas, a plan was fetched. Kay and I went shopping and found a gorgeous white cocktail dress for me. It looked vaguely like a wedding dress, but far less formal. On the day of the wedding, everyone behaved, and P's family was visibly irritated by me wearing a white dress, but good. they remained quiet. At the reception, they did take their time to try and give Kay a stern talking to about her green dress, but she just told them not to worry because she made sure somebody was wearing white. So it definitely was a wedding by their definition after all. Hell yeah. Okay. There is no, a... Not, not the asshole. <laughs> yeah, not the asshole. The statistics stand. Not as wholesome as I predicted, but uh, it's still, this is still a good revenge. 
I like it. This is one of the few cases where wearing white to a wedding is okay. If the bride specifically asks you yeah. to. <laughs> if you go dress shopping with the bride. Yeah. Then I guess it's pretty cool. And the groom is like, hell yeah, do whatever. <laughs> Dude, P's family is wild, bro. The way I would backhand every single one of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the uncle screaming at her. It's not a wedding if someone's not wearing white. Like, who told you that? Your ex-wife? Like, get yeah. up. Ooh. Get over yourself. <laughs> I, the way I just would actually uninvite everybody. And then same. I would have all that food is fucking, you know, leftovers Freezer. or I mean, yeah, freezing all of it or sending out last minute invites to the people that didn't make the cut. <laughs> I would have done some petty and grant Mima's last wish, but technically I'd invite them, but it'd only be a Zoom invite. Ah, oh. there you go. But they do already, I mean, a few days, they might already have the, so the even if you uninvite them, they True. have the invitation and all that. They're so probably They would crash up. it. They would crash yeah. it knowing these people. They can all suck my pee for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Are you ready for a segment by the amazing Underbaki? Let's go. From the corners of the internet, here are some hand-picked posts that will make you question is this poster okay? Make sure to please sound off in the comments or over on the road discord whether or not you agree on if this poster is okay. Another passport, bro. Let's go. That was the one I did last week. <laughs> I didn't even check to see if people were harassing him. <laughs> Should have. Uh, who gives a fuck about that guy? Yeah, really? <laughs> Don't do it. All right. Post number one is coming from r slash facepalm. Uh-oh. This is a screenshot of a tweet. So insane that Twitter is X and they removed tweet and it's a post. So dumb. You know how many companies try to have something synonymous with their name, like a tweet? <laughs> it's crazy to go backwards and be like, yeah, it's a post. Like every other... Oh, so it is called a post now, not a tweet anymore. No, but I mean, I still call it Twitter. I still call it tweets. Oh, fuck yeah. it. I will never change it. Yeah. <laughs> I will never call it other than Twitter. Didn't they just allow porn on it now, too? Uh, I guess I'm coming I back. Get- <laughs> not that it wasn't there before. <laughs> <laughs> so quick. With Tumblr. <laughs> so quick. All right. This back, never baby. go Let's back. Go. <laughs> someone say porn? <laughs> Hey, at least I don't have to type additional X's, just one X and I'm good. <laughs> like a shortcut. <laughs> oh, exactly. I mean, there is oh. no more hub. This is John's way back in. Baby, I got VPN. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, that shit bypass. I, I don't give a fuck. Hub anymore? <laughs> no, Texas and a, a Texas and a few other states outlawed. Yeah. Specifically hub. Like the lawmakers thought only the hub. Oh. Was the only yeah, place. Sometimes I get mad, bro. I'd be setting VPN and it's the state that gets. I'm like, fuck. Now I got to pick another state. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm doing Canada this summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The tweet goes as follows. Men who carry water bottles out in public. Give me the ick. Bitch. I'm carrying the fuck out of my own wallet everywhere. Okay. Especially at the airport. You can't go what? a few hours without having your little sips of water. Carrying no. around anything is actually a feminine trait. The only thing feminine as fuck. <laughs> the only <laughs> things men should be carrying around are his wallet and a pocket knife. You can't bring that in the airport. airport? Yeah, the airport. <laughs> You're stupid as hell. Uh, yeah. I Yeah, I don't think they're okay. They're Is not that okay. Yeah, that's it. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Airports are like the most disgusting, like, water. I would not ever get water from, like, a plane. First of all, it's gross. And two, the I'm only that. water that they have at the airport is fucking Dasani. And you know how I feel about that shit. Wait, you have so to. I am going to bring my water. You have to empty out your water bottle when you. I, oh, I do. But then I'd go somewhere else and find something else that's not Dasani. Or I have a freaking, like, uh, those electrolyte packets. So then I don't have to taste it completely. Someone said if you freeze the bottle, like the water, really, you, you don't have to empty it. Now, I don't take this as legal <laughs> advice, but, <laughs> but I, I saw really? that. I don't That's know if it's actually true because it's a solid, right? 
So That's... I don't know. That might be an option. Whoa. Um, either way, this poster is not okay. And, and they're not okay. I could have told you that just by the website they posted on <laughs> the fu- uh, the fucking you know that tiktok that's like uh anytime women are like oh it gives me the ache if this happens yeah like, and then they're like all right and they add it to a list of things men aren't Scrolling. allowed to do they're like oh shit <laughs> can't carry water bottles can't run after a ping pong ball yeah. <laughs> so <Damn. funny. laughs> i haven't seen one of those in a while but those are always good yeah they kind of fell off a little bit all right post number two this is coming from r slash not how guys work. Ooh. Mm. But it is a screenshot from r slash not how girls work. So oh. reverse, 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 reverse. <laughs> and the screenshot from the other subreddit oh is a screenshot God. from Twitter. <laughs> wow. It's just. <laughs> it's Inception. <laughs> Inception. <laughs> Not okay, go. by the way. I'll just answer that. <laughs> the tweet goes as follows. Women with high body counts develop psychopath eyes. Men what? who don't develop those eyes from having a lot of sexual partners. Men develop those eyes from killing or PTSD. You <laughs> wouldn't fuck? be friends with a murderer, with you? What the fuck? Did, I feel like I had a stroke. What did I read? Huh? Not only this person not okay, they should be on a watch list, I think. <laughs> Women with high body counts develop psychopath eyes. Men don't develop those eyes from having a lot of sexual partners. They develop those eyes from killing or PTSD. So they're saying women with high body counts are the equivalent are s- to men who kill men and have kills. PTSD? Is that what I'm... I mean, I have PTSD and I don't have psycho fucking eyes. Oh my goodness. What is this person person trying to say? I think the person who wrote this uh, has the lead paint stare. You know what I'm talking about? (laughs) No, but (laughs) dead eyed stare. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I'm so confused by what they're even trying to get. This one's even easier than the last one. Not okay. Not okay. Not okay. You might want to get admitted somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this is AI that is not fully developed. You know what I, I mean? just truly don't understand how you compare murder to sleeping to, around. Yes. Yeah. That's I crazy. mean, it was posted on Twitter, so. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's where I would expect it. That's Yeah. Weird. It's yeah. the new 4chan, and I hate it. Damn. Yeah. There are funny but. tweets that I still see. I just, you can't go to the comments. The comments are yeah. no good. Yeah, it's because all the fucking blue check marks who suck Elon Musk's dick. Yeah. Pay him $8 a month. It's terrible. Comment. All right. Well, that's it for this week, y'all. Are we ready to hop into some of these Venmos? Let's do it. Okay. So again, we hit y'all with the headline, Wikimaniacs. I don't know the total that we have donated. I don't know if Josh wants to look that up while we're probably not. We can edit that up. Uh, I could try. <laughs> <laughs> but we have helped Nora Cross $10,000. And uh, we could not be more thankful to you guys for that. So uh, it's time to read all these Venmos like I do every week or every time I host. Also, I got the number if you want that before we start. Okay, yeah. Before we start, how much have we donated in total? Uh, $4,551. Sheesh. Wikimania. Yeah. That's Amazing. awesome. My goodness. Thank you guys so much. All right. Let's break right into it. Raymond writes. Love your show, guys. Here's my little contribution to help those in Gaza. Also, just heard the Formula One edition of Fuck, Mary Kill, or Fuck, Mary Yeet, and I want to tell Sean and John that there's a young Filipina racing driver by the name of Bianca Bustamante that might okay. one day break into F1. Hey. Hell yeah. Filipino excellence. Love to see it. Raymond Love sends it. $20. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you. Uh, Allie writes, I just had a girl's trip to Fredericksburg and we listened to your pod the whole way home. Just letting y'all know, I got you three new fans. Shout oh, out. That's awesome. <laughs> to Shelly, Mo, and Kara. Also, Team Pop Punk AI patron song. Not the weird <laughs> pirate chant one, Lamau. <laughs> new Civil War, maybe? Allie sends $3. I could bring it back. I could do that. Next up, we got Mandy who writes, hey, goats, legally pill pop in here. 
I just saw the preview on of the episode on Patreon. I'm a rich rich. And got a little disappointed after last week, Sean saying he'd read it on the next episode. Now I'm super excited and hope that's still the case. We did read it. We did. We did read it. But yes. this is an old Venmo, Mandy. So yeah, Mandy sends $2. Thank you for the great story, Mandy. All right, next up Thank we you. got Haley who writes, Justice for all naked poopers. Haley sends $1. <laughs> No, shame. Shame them. <laughs> you do not shame the naked pooping society, all right? Shame. Ding, 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 ding. Shame. Next up, we got, you know, I only know that from the GIF because I've never watched that show. Anyways. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Addy writes. Yeah, we'll be walking down the aisle naked already and then we'll proceed to shitting right after, okay? <laughs> my God. Addy writes, I quit my job today. <laughs> also, happy pride. Thanks for keeping me sane during nursing school. Love, longtime member of the Rich Rich fam. Addie sends $3. Thank whoop. you. That's awesome. Next up, we got Solana who writes tee and sends $5. <laughs> tee <laughs> Next up, we got the Barefoot Conrosa who writes, uh, I just want to Shout support out. some great causes. They send $2.52. What a That's goat. That's awesome. Thank you. Next up, we got Savannah who writes, happy pride, bitches, and sends $4.69. Hell yes. yeah. Hell yeah. Let's go. Next up, we got Hannah who writes, thank you guys for doing everything you're doing to help with the absolute horror that's taking place. I can't contribute much, but wanted to help in a tiny way, at least pineapple, pineapple heart. Hannah sends $5. Thank that is a lot. Pineapples. Hey, anything helps. So <laughs> anything we appreciate helps. you for doing that. Next up, we got Janae who writes, I am a poor, poor, but I graduate nursing school in December. Let's Another one. go. Here's what I can afford for now. Keep up the great work, guys. Janae sends $10. I wonder what our percentage of nurse and nurse students are. <laughs> it's got to be pretty high. <laughs> hey, if we ever like tour around. And if one of us fall off the stage, if we going to be all right. It's going to be helpful. <laughs> it's going to be me falling off, baby. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Next up, we got Michaela with her word jumbles. She sent six different Venmos. Let's go. Mm. Pussy trap charades in honor of my cat being stuck in the woods for two weeks today. Hopefully we catch her. We've trapped one raccoon, two skunks, but zero cats. Oh, my, oh my God. She sends... Shaved booty patch in honor of us catching my kitty and finding a wound near her bum, likely from a coyote. Oh, my goodness. Brought her to the vet, and she's doing well now. The vet did indeed shave just her booty. Mm. She's also sends phantom mushroom shampoo, seatbelt buckle liquor. What's your favorite swear? Probably fuck. <laughs> SpongeBob <laughs> Piranha. So thank you, Michaela. I'm for wearing your, a SpongeBob, oh, SpongeBob shirt right now. <laughs> your yeah. weekly riddles. Uh, 66 <laughs> cents from Michaela. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we got Joy who writes, thank you guys so much for everything you are doing to support those in need. I never thought my favorite podcast would be three men, but I love to be surprised. Joy sends $10. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. Next up, we have the richest member of, our, of the rich, rich, Kieran. Uh, who sent a thousand dollars? Oh uh, yes, wild. She responded because we were like, if that was a mistake and that was supposed to be ten dollars or a hundred dollars, <laughs> we'll send it back. She replied, "Not an accident. It was <sighs> worth it, especially to see John's surprise Pikachu face on YouTube." <laughs> I can't have a shock Pikachu face. My God, lots That's of love amazing. from this Wikimaniac to you boys and the rest of the community. Kieran sends an additional two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Totally. Thank you, Jim. We appreciate you. One thousand dollars. One thousand and two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Oof, crazy. What Thank you very much. Goat. Next up, we got Sarah who writes, "Richard here. Thank you for brightening up my darkest day." And Sarah sends sixty-nine cents. <laughs> Gotta go. Oh, yeah. Let's go, Sarah. Jacqueline writes, "I can listen to this podcast all day. Love each of you, and thanks for being the best people. And thank you for supporting Gaza." Jacqueline sends ten dollars. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Haley writes, my review is on Apple Podcasts. I am a rich, rich, but I didn't know how to leave a review on Patreon. Is that a thing? I don't think so. You can, I don't think so. You can comment on an episode. Uh, you can. Yes. Yeah, yeah that, I guess messages, but 
Oh yeah, it's very hard to see messages. <laughs> it <laughs> to is be honest. very difficult to look. Uh, at hopefully, messages when John's full yeah. time, he can maybe keep an eye on those more. But uh, yes, as we're speaking right now, we have not checked those. But I will. I'll check the reviews here. And Haley sends one dollar. Thank you, Haley. Thank you. Next up, we got Natalie who writes, y'all make me giggle on the sad days. Long live pineapples. Natalie sends $5. <laughs> wow. And SpongeBob, it's it's all making sense now. Oh, I have like pineapples on my shirt oh, too. hell yeah. God damn. Wow. Next up, we got Kat who writes, thanks for helping Nora and using your platform to help bring awareness to what is going on in Palestine. Hope y'all continue to get a flood of donations. It was heartwarming to hear how much everyone has been donating these past few weeks. Thank you all so much. Cat sends twenty dollars. Thank you, Cat. Thank you, Cat. Next up, we got Soraya, who just writes smiley face and sends ten dollars. Thank you. Oh, smiling back at you. Next up, we got the OG Venmo goat, Doctor Effie, <laughs> who writes, "I am not a medical doctor. I am a PhD, but I am a licensed clinical therapist, and I want to legally." Or I want to validate legally pill popping. OP, you are violated and you should definitely try to see what your legal options are, but only if you can emotionally handle it. Protect your mental health. Dr. Effie sends $10. Hell yeah. Thank you. That's Effie, coming that. from a doctor. From a yeah. doctor. <laughs> a professional. Next professional. Up we, we got Melissa who writes, this is technically my cat's Venmo, but she is always stepping on my phone. To like free Palestine TikTok, so I'm sure she won't mind. Thank you for being good people and making me laugh every week. Melissa sends four dollars. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up, and to your cat. And your cat. And your yeah. cat. <laughs> uh Polina is up next and she writes, Y'all, it's full grown hip. Oh, I guess that's the username. A fairly new listener, and I need you to read the story of the OSU tree man. I'm sending my entire Venmo balance to you to support Operation Olive Branch. And then they've linked what I assume is the story of the OSU tree man. I'll pull okay. that up on my next episode. Uh, but uh, Polina sends $17.28. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I'm very you. interested in this tree man. Tree <laughs> man. Next up, we got Paige who writes for Gaza. Uh, Paige sends $7. Thank you. Thank you, Paige. Next up, we got Alyssa, who writes, Happy Pride. I'm seriously considering creating a Patreon account. As you three make my days brighter while I work, here are more pineapples for Nora and to keep Palestine in our minds, thoughts, and hearts. Alyssa sends $100. Oh, my Holy goodness. Thank, thank you, Alyssa. Very much. That's awesome. Next up, we got Whitney who writes, here's a bit more for being awesome. Also, my husband and I met when I was 21 and he was 28. And oh, talk to him, Sean. Illegal. We'll be, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be celebrating 12 years in October. Either, oh, yeah. Either my frontal lobe developed early, probably not, or his late, probably, or we just got lucky. <laughs> anyway, I think we beat your rule. Also. In case people think I was saying probably not and probably, that was her writing, not me commenting in the middle. Uh, but, Sean taking shots. Yeah, I'm not taking shots. I'm reading what is written by Whitney. Whitney sends $10. And hell yeah. The rule hell is yeah, not thanks, perfect. Whitney. It's just no, statistically it's a lot of asterisks. Works out. Tons yeah. of asterisks. So many gray spots. Uh, next up, we got L who writes, the genocide in Gaza has been weighing heavy on my heart for some time now. I'm glad to know that you all care. And for the viewers, stream Olive Branch by Eliana, a beautiful yet heartbreaking song by a Palestinian creator. It brings me to tears every time. El sends $15. Yeah, definitely check it out. I, I've listened to that. Next up, we got Natalie who writes, I got Patreon slash Venmo slash Reddit just for the Reddit on Wiki podcast. <gasps> Whoa. I just became wow. a rich rich. And I love how you guys stand up for important causes. I know this is everywhere and I'm not the best at typing, but thank you for all the laughs and the lights that you bring. Thank you, Sean, Josh, and John. Natalie sends $5. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate awesome. you. Next up, we got Tessa who writes watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. Proud to help some of my favorite Panois and Josh support a great cause. <laughs> Honorary. <laughs> yeah. Tessa sends 60 cents. 
Thank that's you. like the the we fuck with Mike because Mike fucks with us or whatever meme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we rock it with Mike because. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we got Annie, a resident wrestling fan who writes, Happy Ray Mysterio Day, boys. And Hell yeah. Annie yes. sends $6.19. Six, one, Hell nine. Yeah. Oh, that's not, not technically. Te- not technically a fist bump, but we love wrestling. So Also, happy Juneteenth. I know this episode's going to come out later, but yes. yeah, happy is. Juneteenth, We're recording everybody. on Juneteenth. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Next up, we got Gabrielle who writes, love you three. Thank you for using your platform for good. You have restored a little of my faith in straight men, but just a little, lol. Free Palestine. I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame, don't blame you. Choose the bear. <laughs> uh, Gabrielle sends $15. Again, that is a total uh, for this week of $1,300 and six. I, I can't fucking read. $1,000. <laughs> Three hundred and six dollars and thirty cents, totaling the month of June at two thousand dollars, two thousand thirty dollars. I'm rounding up because that's how much we donate. <laughs> we we always round up the oh dollar. Oh my gosh! But this dude's our accountant. I'm very afraid. He runs. I, I all type books. it. I type it. <laughs> I talk to the people through text. I'm not gonna read it. Y'all know this. <laughs> Funny. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you very much, everyone who's donated. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, going Absolutely. to an amazing cause and a great family. So awesome. Oh, yeah. That's it for this week. If you want more Reddit on Wiki, we'll be back on Friday. If you want even more, you can become a member on YouTube or a patron on Patreon and get content damn near almost, uh, I don't know, two to three times a week, which is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, only one more than you. Don't worry about it. Don't, you're getting two to three posts a week <laughs> if you become a member or patron. That's it for this week before I shoot myself any more in the mouth. Bye, guys. Later. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye. Get therapy.